Welcome back to One Heart Live, bringing you the best Caribbean-inspired conversation. And it has been quite a conversation. I'm Gemma Fear, and with me is Margaret Casely Hayford, Black Businesswoman of the Year 2014. We've got Julian Hall, the entrepreneur, and Bianca Miller, entrepreneur and TV star. Now, before the break, I asked, as a percentage, how many female entrepreneurs do you think found being a woman a challenge in starting their business? Now, surprisingly, it's said to be only 12%, according to a study by Ernst & Young. And before the break, we took a look at some of those young entrepreneurs themselves who've really built themselves a brand. Now, Jamal Edwards from SPTV is one fantastic guy who's built his own social media platform. And as well as that, we had a call in from Big J. Thank you, Big J, once more for calling in, who told us about some of the challenges as well as the opportunities that he saw in getting his brand into Selfridges. Now, feel free to get in touch and pose any of our questions to these lovely guests sat beside me. Simply let us know your thoughts. You can tweet us at OneHeartTV, email connect at OneHeartTV.com or simply give us a call. It's 0207-819-6460. Now, in case you missed last year's Apprentice, Bianca Miller absolutely powered her way to the finals of The Apprentice, so let's take a look. Hi, I'm Bianca, founder and creator of Bianca Miller London. We offer a diverse range of nude tights. We've created eight unique shades that we believe will cover the full spectrum. Now, Bianca, watching that video must have seemed like quite a long time ago, but I, I don't know, did it? Did it feel like the other day? No, it was, it was a long time ago, mm. but um, I think it, the brand and the proposition has come a long way since when I went on The Apprentice, mm. but it was just an amazing opportunity to go on such an amazing platform and say to the rest of the world, actually, look, this is an issue. Mm. We, in the market at the moment, have one or two shades of new tights, and we're not catering to the full spectrum. And I really wanted to create a brand that was inclusive. I didn't want to segregate and say, actually, here's tights just for women of colour. Yeah. It's actually about looking at the fact that diversity is mm. so important. Mm. And that means people who are lighter or darker than the norm. Yes. And that was what was really key for me. Absolutely. And being a Caribbean woman in mm. the competition, I mean, was that a challenge? How did that feel and how did you cope? Sure. It wasn't a challenge as such, but I did feel an element of kind of pressure, pressure. that actually as the only black woman on that particular um, you know, episode, I needed to do well for myself, for mm. my family, but also to some degree for the rest of the community. Because mm. I felt that sometimes on television you see black women and you don't always see the best representation of us as a community. Mm. And I didn't want to be that person that yeah. you watched on TV and were really embarrassed about, yeah. you know? And, and that for me was a pressure. Oh, well, you were definitely a true representative. I must say, I watched it. Julie and Margaret, did you see the series of The Apprentice? I saw, I saw um, a very worthy um, uh, winning uh, individual. Oh. And, and I have to say that one of the really great things about um, what Bianca's doing is, is, is filling a gap. Because mm. what, what's really annoying about life is that there are so many gaps. And yeah. most of us have been schooled just to stand on the sidelines and whinge. And we, everything turns into a whinge fest. Oh, if only they had more makeup for us and, if they, and so on. Mm. Fill the gap. Do mm. it. If you see the gap. I mean, it's, that's, that's what it's all about. And I wonder sometimes whether there is something that is really quite sad about all of us not mm. wanting to go out there and do it for ourselves. And it's absolutely fantastic when young people just say, that's it, I'm doing it. And I, it might be a generational thing because um, I didn't know whether my generation's too close to the generation that was brought in as to work in services, yes. you know, so in the NHS and on the buses and so on. Um, and and to, as, as part of the service sector, because even my fa my father was a lawyer and, and, and retrained as an accountant, but still part of the service sector. And and I think if you've been brought into a country with that mentality that you are part of a service, it's hard to break out of that. Yes. And it's fantastic that this that you know my daughter's generation and Bianca are saying actually you know what no I want to build my own Definitely. I want to do it for myself. Definitely building independence back in. Yeah. And, you it's know I've excellent. loved seeing that. Loved Good watching you. you on the well show as well. Fantastic. Yeah, congratulations. I mean. Julian, you also deal with personal development, and I do think it is about sort of reprogramming the minds, especially of some of the young, um, as we go generations onto generations, to showing them the possibilities that are out there. Talk to me about some of the 
coaching and personal development that you do with entrepreneurs? So personal development for me is really just a facet of entrepreneurship. I mean, I don't want to ignore the fact that entrepreneurship is also about business. It's also about, you know, growing a company and building a team and generating profit and, and all of that kind of stuff. But I think it does hinge on a level of balance and, and an approach that we need to take, which is slightly different um, to the more traditional view of business. And I think especially now we're in, uh, it's almost like time is changing before us because of the speed at which social media and digital is effect are affecting our lives. I mean, you know, technology is being brought out on a monthly basis. I remember having the same TV for 10 years, 15 <laughs> years when I was younger, right? But now there's a new TV every year, right? Yeah. In fact, you know, technology is moving faster than the consumer's appetite for the technology, okay? So that what that does, though, is it presents us with brand new business models. Yes. And we've never seen these before, ever. And, you know, I do some work with an, a lot of um, schools teaching entrepreneurship over the course of the academic year. And the starting point for us is, you know, have a look at uh, and think about what you love to do. Because um, I my, my philosophy is that uh, you could take these, you could take anything that you love to do and wrap a business model around it. Okay, okay? yeah, I love And, it. you know, I would love someone to prove me wrong on this, mm. but that's the starting point. Okay. And with, with a lot of these young people, they like YouTube gaming, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, you know, um, YouTube channel owners in the UK who are multi-millionaires just playing, playing games yeah. and recording them on YouTube. But what about being a Caribbean in that world? How does that look? What's the difference between being a Caribbean and going through that journey and not being a Caribbean? I mean, what are the struggles? What are the added pressures like Bianca mentioned earlier? You know what? Um, I think that, um, and I'm going to say something which is maybe quite edgy here, Go but, um, you know, in my career, and I've come through kind of... Uh, investment banking, into digital, into just full-blown entrepreneurial business consultancy. But I think that um, if you're in a minority and you excel at what you, uh, in your field, um, that that's all that counts. Mm. And I almost see it as, you know, I call it the Eminem slash Tiger Woods slash Lewis Hamilton effect, <laughs> that if you are a minority in a particular sector and you do really well, you'll be noticed, mm. you know, it'll almost look like there's something different or special about you. And whether or not that is the case or whether or not you have just decided that you're going to really work hard and produce a product or a service with as much excellence wrapped around it as possible. Um, I think that that's all that matters. Now, the thing is, with being Caribbean, we know that we excel in so many different areas, mm. sports, entertainment and so on and so forth. And I think all myself and perhaps subconsciously colleagues of mine in the Caribbean business community have done is maybe leaned on some of the stuff that we see that we created in different areas yeah. and applied it to our own businesses yeah. in the more traditional areas. Because I've got to say, you know, as Caribbeans, we're not just great at the music. We're not just great at the sport. So it's not, it's more than just highlighting those those people and saying that they're our heroes yeah. because actually you know we've got three incredible people sitting here today and you're not in music you're not directly in sport but what you have done is built brands created brands and you're inspiring entrepreneurs budding entrepreneurs as we can speak I, can i come back on that a little yes, bit sure. Gemma? because um one of the things that that that, that um, julian just said which I, I thought was really important was that um we need to um build a context mm. And, and that's what his whole coaching is about, building a context. And I think what's really important about this is that, one, I was going to sound completely mad, but Caribbeans are very outgoing mm -hmm. and very friendly and very warm. And that's actually a fantastic starting point for building a business. Because one of the, the, the worst forms of boss is the boss who's intimidating mm. and cold and won't nurture and bring people on. And as an entrepreneur, you're gonna be completely useless if you can go out there and get the business. And then the people back at base haven't got any form yes. of innovative skill or discretion because they're mm. terrified and quaking in their boots. Yeah. But I mean, if, they're, if, they're, if they're in a warm, nurturing environment, they will actually flourish. And in fact, mm. I mean, if you look at Google, that's what Google's trying to do in a really big way. This is fun. This is a great place yeah. to be, and we love right. you. Making it interactive, definitely. Absolutely. 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 Exactly. And, you know, it is about being approachable. And, Bianca, I think that's one of the reasons why you came across so well on The Apprentice, because, you know, you've got that bubbly, that warm spirit. Mm -hmm. How did you find it being, you know, a Caribbean? Did you find the same sort of opportunities that yeah. Margaret said, twisting that and actually sure. using that bubbly character of yours to get you through yeah. to the finals? I think, to be honest, that just is, that's my character. <laughs> and I think that has helped me through various stages of my life actually so starting my first business at 23 I had to have 
some character, some you know confidence to actually go out there and say, hi, this is what I'm doing. Do you want to take my services? And I think that, yeah, of course it carries you, but that's all about being true to your personality mm. and realizing the value in you, your story, and your experience and your expertise. Because just having expertise is not enough. You know, you need to have something that draws people to you and want, makes people want to work with you or for you, as you said. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you were telling me that you're launching your brand yes. next month. So yeah. I want to hear from you before you go. What's next? When's the launch? So the launch is the end of next month. So it should be the 30th. And we will be launching in one of the stores you mentioned today, actually. Ooh, but I, I'm Harris, not going to say which Selfridges. one. I'm not going to say oh. which one. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's exciting times and it's, it's been a difficult journey, but I think the reality is that most journeys in entrepreneurship and business is difficult. Absolutely. And I think too many entrepreneurs make it seem like it's really easy, but actually it's hard work. Yeah, it's restless it nights, it's networking, it's really getting the brand out there. And that's something you mentioned earlier, Julian, briefly, talking about consistency. As a final tip for our audience, what would you say? Yeah, I think just leaning on some of the, one of the comments from Jamal Edwards, and you know, they asked him a really important question, what's made you different? And he said, in one word, it's consistency. And I think that, um, but there's a context around consistency. You can only be consistent with something that you genuinely love and that you can be transparent about. Otherwise, you know, you'll be almost an imposter in an industry if you're only there because it makes money, not because you want to create real value and deliver a product or service that's going to benefit a market. Mm. So I think, you know, having those, putting a context around that consistency and using that as a vehicle um, is, uh, is, is one of the key factors of success Definitely. in business. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I wish you could stay longer, but unfortunately, I know you have to leave us. Thank you, Bianca. Lovely. I loved. To, I honestly can't wait to see what department store you're going to pop <laughs> up in next. I'll let you know. <laughs> and Julian, the entrepreneur, thank you for thank gracing you for us with your superhero powers. <laughs> Margaret, you're staying with us, so stay comfortable. And we want to continue hearing from you on Twitter, Instagram. Give us a call if you can. You know, grab, a, grab something quick. It's a break, and we'll catch you on the other side.